Like all good comic book movies, Doctor Strange brings with it its fair share of comic book references, Easter eggs, and teases for what is still to come in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some are easier to miss than others, so we've broken them down for you. Though there isn't a lot connecting Doctor Strange to the wider MCU, we do see Avengers Tower appearing twice against the New York skyline. We see it first towards the beginning, while Strange suits up to give his fateful speech, and again during the mind-bending mirror dimension battle. When we first meet Stephen Strange, we see him clash with a fellow colleague, Nicodemus West. In the comics, Nicodemus is a surgeon who failed to save Strange's hands from the severe nerve damage he suffered following his car accident. Filled with guilt for ridding the world of Strange's surgical prowess, Nicodemus also goes on to study under the Ancient One, and later returns as an antagonist to Doctor Strange during The Oath. Doctor Strange director Scott Derrickson promised us that he'd managed to sneak in some Pink Floyd into the movie, and moments before Strange's fateful car crash, Pink Floyd's interstellar overdrive can be heard playing on his car stereo. When Strange's car crash happens, he's having a conversation with the nurse, Billy who mentions a case involving a 35-year-old marine colonel who crushed his lower spine in some kind of experimental armor. While this does sound like a reference to Colonel James Rhodes, who suffered paralysis in his lower body after crashing during the Leipzig airport battle of Captain America's Civil War, his age doesn't match up with that of the supposed victim. It could, however, be a reference to Iron Man 2, as Justin Hammer uses marines to test out his experimental suits of hammer armor. When Christine Palmer and Doctor Strange discuss possible avenues of surgery, Christine drops the phrase bleeding edge into the conversation. Bleeding edge refers to a new form of technology that is not yet stable enough to be released to the public, but it could also be a nod towards Iron Man's famous bleeding edge armor, a design which resembled the armor Robert Downey Jr. wore in Civil War. The password to the Wi-Fi at the Ancient One's sanctuary is Shambhala. This is likely a nod to Into Shambhala, a famous Doctor Strange story from the mid-1980s which sees the sorcerer returning to Tibet 20 years after he finished his training. The one-armed Master Hamir is mistaken to be the Ancient One by Strange, and later appears to help teach him an important lesson about spellcasting. Teach me. He's modeled on a character from the comics, Hamir the Hermit, who was the Ancient One's most loyal attendant. Tina Minoru also made a cameo in Doctor Strange as one of the Ancient One's pupils. Tina Minoru hasn't traditionally been associated with Doctor Strange. Instead, she's an important figure as the mother of Nico Minoru in Marvel's Runaways, a series which recently got the green light for a TV adaptation. The Book of Cagliostro is a major plot point in Doctor Strange, the mysterious tome from which Cassilius rips the spell to summon Dormammu. This book also appears in the comics and is used by Doctor Strange and Baron Mordo to travel in time. During a training sequence with Strange, Baron Mordo wields a weapon which he calls the Staff of the Living Tribunal. No such weapon exists in the Marvel comics, but it's likely another name for the Staff of Polar Power, which was used by the Living Tribunal to harness cosmic energy. The Living Tribunal is a cosmic, ageless being, the protector of the Marvel multiverse itself. Does this mean he's coming for Infinity War? Baron Mordo also uses an artifact called the Vaulting Boots of Valtor another mystical object which doesn't seem to exist in Marvel lore. In the comics, Valtor is a mystical entity from which sorcerers draw power for various spells, such as the Vapors of Valtor. When Doctor Strange first encounters the Ancient One and Baron Mordo in Strange Tales 115, Mordo attempts to use the Vapors of Valtor to kill the Ancient One. The Avengers themselves get name-dropped by Wong later in the movie. When teaching Strange of the Three Sanctums, Wong describes the Avengers as the protectors of Earth against physical threats, while the sorcerers of the Ancient One's Order are the protectors against mystical threats. A while back, there were rumors swirling about the appearance of Jericho Drum, aka Brother Voodoo, in Doctor Strange. He didn't show up in the movie, but his brother did. Daniel Drum appeared briefly in the Doctor Strange Prelude comics as another student of the Ancient One and in the movie, the guardian of the New York City Sanctum killed in the line of duty is named to be that same Daniel Drum. When Strange is stabbed by Cassilius and seeks help from Christine Palmer, he falls unconscious while she's trying to stop his bleeding, and appears in his astral form to assist her with the surgery. This scene was almost directly lifted from the famous Doctor Strange tale, The Oath, in which Doctor Strange and the Night Nurse team up to battle Nicodemus West. You all knew this one was coming. Stan Lee's Doctor Strange cameo occurs during the Mirror Dimension battle in New York. He appears sitting in a bus reading Aldous Huxley's The Doors of Perception, 
which Huxley wrote about his experiences taking the psychedelic drug mescaline, a fun nod to Doctor Strange's psychedelic origins. The Wand of Watum is mentioned by Baron Mordo and wielded by Wong during the battle in Hong Kong. In the comics, the wand is an incredibly powerful mystical object designed to amplify the power of the one who holds it. It's an enduring item in the history of Marvel Comics, having popped up as recently as last year in Invincible Iron Man, where Doctor Doom reveals he has one of the wands in his possession. If you wondered why the man behind the motion capture for bad guy Dormammu's big purple face wasn't listed in the credits, that's because he was actually portrayed by Benedict Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange himself. When Cassilius and his followers are defeated by Doctor Strange, they float off and are absorbed into the Dark Dimension, where they seem to transform into figureless shapes with one big glowing eye. These are the Mindless Ones, savage mystical beings who exist in the Dark Dimension and have proved to be a challenge for even Dormammu himself. The most popular Doctor Strange theory was finally confirmed at the conclusion of the movie by Wong, who remarks that Strange probably shouldn't wear the Eye of Agamotto out on the streets due to the fact that it's an infinity stone. It is, of course, the time gem. The mid credit scene revealed a meeting between Thor and Doctor Strange, which presumably takes place during Thor Ragnarok. Strange isn't too happy with Thor for bringing Loki back to Earth, and Thor explains that they are looking for their father, Odin, who has gone missing after the events of the Dark World. Strange offers to help them find Odin because he wants Loki off Earth ASAP. And given the green-eyed god's track record with our planet, that's probably a good idea. In this scene, Strange also wears yellow gloves, a callback to the classic design of the character.